we'll see here in a moment if I can actually, if I'm live. All right, so, and when you whisper, again, the microphone is right next to you. So, um, I mean, you're fine. You, know, you, don't have to, you don't have to whisper. It's just that people will hear you when you don't hear me. So anyway, my name is Chris Hines. Um, welcome to my second weekly Friday Facebook live stream. It is just after 1.30, and I'm sorry we're late again. Um, we're still working through the technical difficulties. Um, last week, we noticed there was a bit of a microphone delay. Um, and they can hear you typing through um, So we bought this lap, this this microphone um, that attaches, you know, like, I don't know what it's called, this wireless mic. But we don't have batteries. So um, I hope you'll deal with us again for uh, another week as there is a, probably a bit of a uh, delay again. So anyway, get ready for week number two. Um, so again, we'll be doing one of these every Friday from 1.30 to 2 o'clock. And you'll hear about the highlights of the week and anything that's fit to say. And hopefully, um, we'll not say anything that's not fit to say. But um, <laughs> so uh, send in your questions. Hopefully, we'll have the opportunity to, uh, to start reading some of the Facebook Live comments as they come in. And uh, occasionally, I want, or at some point, I want to bring on special guests on the show too. So if you have someone you want to hear from, please let us know so that we can bring them on. Or I guarantee that we can definitely make them come on board, right? Something like that? So anyway, if you send in your suggestions, then obviously that will help us reach out to whoever you think would be good. So um, in case you don't already know, Denver City Council's District 10, or as I like to say, Denver District 10, is Uptown Capital Golden Triangle, Houston Triangle Street, Pink Club of Belcaro, and uh, the top half of Spear. So, I um, can you tell I said that before? So, anyway, I want to talk about a few things. The first, I want to talk about transportation. So, yesterday afternoon, we had a loss of life in a, a vehicular accident, as well, crash, excuse me. I want to use the correct terminology. Uh, there was a crash at first in Colorado, and, uh, and it, there was a fatality involved. So, uh, Denver, we, as we continue to grow as a city, we need to relook at uh, how we can make sure everyone has the freedom to get from A to B safely. And, and I'm sorry for all those affected. Thank you for our first responders and Denver police for. Uh, doing all you do so that we can, um, uh, so that, that we can uh, uh, respond to these emergencies, and uh, we'll we're already looking at that intersection to see how we can improve it, and um, hopefully we can have some additional good that comes from this tragedy uh, as in, in the form of better uh, street design for uh, for Chicago. So. Um, also, I want to, to move on and I'm going to talk a little, bit, a little bit more about transportation um, this week. I, actually, just yesterday, we took a tour of our traffic management center, and uh, it was really interesting to see how much uh, digital control we have over all of our, uh, all of our traffic lights. And uh, so it was really neat to, to, to get a tour of the center and get a, a better understanding of what we can and can't do. With, uh, with, with regards to our lights and our like timing, and uh, you know, there's some some ways for our uh, our city to control lights at uh, a particular event, like the Pepsi Center or the ballpark, or um, you know various other events, um, and that could be an officer right there, you know, with a, a button controlling the light. But also we have the facility or the ability. At our facility to uh, to control the lights uh, from from our central server too, so or from our central facility, and, and we also learned that we have a redundant facility elsewhere. That um, so in case the first one goes down, if the power loss, uh, we can make sure that, that everyone uh, can still make it around the city with uh, functioning traffic lights. Um, so we also uh, participated yesterday afternoon right after the traffic management tour. In a flash mob. 
So I don't know if you saw it, or if we did, that uh, the city is uh, is painting and improving our bus only lanes. Uh, the the idea is to make sure that we have um, access for our mass transit system, and, um, and we certainly we've heard the news about our bus and train operators and the uh, how RTD is short staffed. As you may know, the uh, the city of Denver has no direct control over the regional transportation district. We have to, um, well, we get to rely on our RTD board directors for uh, for their wisdom on how we can make sure that RTD functions better in the future. Um, and uh, and we also know probably because we've already received the ballots that the city of Denver is uh, is uh, asking voters to agree to a charter change which would create a Denver transportation district out of public works and a couple of organizations. So um, I hope that you vote in favor of 2A. That, that's the creation of the Denver transportation district. It's, uh, it's pretty non-controversial. The reason why the voters have to vote on it is because we're changing the charter. That, uh, public works is one of the uh, 10 entities that are specifically mentioned in the charter. And any time you change the charter, you can and uh, so, if there's no opposition, it was referred to the ballot by the city council, and uh, and so I, I hope that I hope that you uh, vote in favor of it. At this point, it is mostly a name change, uh, but once we get the name change, we can uh, make sure that the city has uh, the appropriate services uh, to support that new Denver transportation district. And uh, certainly, we're working on that from the city council perspective. Uh, we trust that the mayor will be working on it from the uh, executive branch too. And hey, you know, we're happy to collaborate with them to make the Denver Transportation District a housing success for the city. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, what else has been going on around the district? Well, last Friday, we went to uh, the, uh, the Denver Museum of Art, which is just uh, around the corner from the city county building. And had the opportunity to look at the Monet exhibition, so that was awesome to uh, to be there with the the leadership uh, for the uh, museum. Uh, we also uh, were there with the leadership for uh, for the exhibit itself, which took a large uh, group of people from all over the world uh, to come together to make sure that it uh, it came to fruition. And this is the largest Monet exhibition. The company, oh, thanks for sending an email. Um, uh, the, the largest Monet exhibition to come to the US in over 20 years. So it's a pretty big deal. And uh, and it's coming to the US, uh, specifically Denver, and it's leaving the US. So Denver is the place to catch the, uh, the exhibit. And it's right here in Denver. Okay. Um, also, I took a rare trip outside of Denver's Perfect 10 and went to the Leopold Brothers 20th anniversary celebration. Uh, so Leopold, excuse me, Leopold Brothers is a um, uh, beverage company. They are a distillery, they do uh, spirits, and, uh, and I learned about them from their gin, which, uh, by the way, their distillery is, is in Denver, so it's uh, near Mount Bello. And, uh, and so I'm still supporting the home team, so to speak, uh, but what I really enjoy about the, the tour is uh, is their commitment to environmental sustainability. Uh, they do as much as they can to uh, to ensure that their processes have a minimal impact on the environment as possible. They use gravity when possible when they're moving things through the, the process, and uh, and they also ensure that their uh, their they actually have their own garden uh, that's immediately next to the distillery, and they use their own uh, material from the garden to to make sure that the um, the stuff that they make has that secret sauce built in. So, yeah, sorry about the uh, the, uh, the the whooshing noise of my uh, laptop. It's it's kind of struggling to. To keep up, but once we get batteries for the uh, for the wireless mic, I think that'll probably make things a bit better. Um, we also uh, were able to 
uh, to party with two different international groups uh, that came to the city of Denver. One, uh, we had breakfast with the German Marshall Fund, and uh, that's an international organization that, uh, that actually the mayor was a, a participant in. Um, the, uh, our our Dito executive director uh, uh, also participated, James Mejia, who was uh, the organizer of this particular meeting, uh, was uh, was a participant, so, uh, so I want to thank all of them for helping put this together. The um, uh, the folks that were here uh, from uh, they were generally from all over the EU, and uh, so it was really neat to have uh, to spend some time with them, to answer questions about how we uh, can you know, conduct our government here in the city of Denver. I think we were um, stopped number 10 in their tour. They, it seemed like they've been to a bunch of cities already. Uh, but uh, but they, we showed them a little bit about Denver as well. So, and then lunch, we uh, we met with a bunch of uh, uh, folks also from the EU about Brexit. And, um, and so the EU presidency uh, rotates around uh, every year. And this year, Finland is, um, it is in the driver's seat, so to speak. And we actually had the ambassador uh, from Finland here, the US, the US ambassador from Finland. We also had the, uh, the Finnish consulate general uh, from here in Colorado, as well as a bunch of folks from Slovenia, um, Denmark, uh, I don't know, 10 countries or so represented. And there was a roundtable discussion about the effects of uh, Brexit in the EU and its effects on the United States. So, um, and then the last thing that we, I mean, we did several other things, but uh, the last thing I mentioned briefly is uh, we visited uh, Cabo in Cherry Creek, and, uh, and it was really neat to uh, to do a tour of Cabo. They are uh, one of the best low-income senior housing programs in the country, and they are located right here in the Perfect Ten, um, right next to Cherry Creek, and. Um, speaking of traffic improvements in the road, uh, we are looking at additional traffic improvements on first, and, uh, and specifically we're looking at the traffic study of first and cook, and a couple other intersections just to make sure that we have a way for people to get around our, like I said, uh, for people to get around our city safely, and cer certainly the, uh, the folks at the road uh, shouldn't be relegated to only their building, uh, they should have the freedom to do it and when we heard uh, the concerns about uh, mass transit, like they want to make sure that their bus stops are there and they provide a reasonable transit at, with reasonable frequency, but also they want to be able to get across first. And, and so uh, thank you and the vote for having us. And uh, so let's talk about the environment next. Uh, the biggest thing I want to say is uh, here in District 10 in Denver's Perfect 10, we have been certified green. So uh, the, the um, uh, uh, DDPHE, the, the Denver Department of Public Health and the Environment, has a program called Certified Green. It has been around for 10 years now. And um, we are the first city council office to receive the Certified Green uh, uh, Award, or it's not an award. Um, Certification, there we go. And uh, so, yeah, so we were the first to receive the certification. I talked a lot about uh, climate change on, uh, on the campaign trail. And uh, the first thing that I said on the first night of city council, uh, after I got sworn in, after saying present, um, after roll call, was that climate change is real. And uh, we're, uh, we feel very strongly that we should deliver values and uh, climate change definitely is real. So, uh, so we're excited to uh, to make our, our community climate change public, to make it a uh, priority, and uh, so we did that just in our, in our first few months in office. I, I want to provide a, um, a friendly challenge to my colleagues, and I want to say uh, we hope you get certified too, and, uh, and we're, and, and by friendly challenge, I really mean friendly. Like, if there's anything that we can do to help you and your office uh, get certified, we would love to do that. We're, you know, 
It, it's not that we have some secret sauce here in District 10. Uh, we're happy to, well, maybe we have a little bit of secret sauce, but we're happy to share that with you. And, and, and for all of the, uh, for the more than 30 uh, companies that are also certified for Endeavor's Perfect 10, thank you for all you do. Uh, we'd love to run up that score. So if you have a small business in District 10 and you want to learn more about the certified degree process, uh, please reach out and we'd love to share. Uh, the next thing, uh, we uh, we had a meeting a couple, or we had a tour of the Denver Botanic Gardens a couple weeks ago, which is also in Denver's Perfect 10. And uh, today we met with Andy Farrow as well, just uh, as a follow-up who works with Planet Gardens, and she does um, water-wise water -wise planting uh, consultations for community projects. So if you have a project in, uh, in District 10, or actually probably beyond District 10, but you know, I, I'm kind of partial to 10. Uh, if you have uh, projects that you want to undertake and you want to make sure that you're uh, planting things that are native and sustainable, then uh, please reach out to Janet Gardens, and Annie has, uh, has offered her, uh, her expertise, so, uh, so there's that. Um, next week we'll be talking about single use plastic bags in committee, which um, the, the specific committee is PINGO, so uh, finance and governance, and, uh, and so if you're having interest in uh, single use plastic bags, uh, you know, Feel free to come out. It is Tuesday at 1.30, and, uh, and I'll be there. I'm on the committee. So uh, the last, uh, the last little bit. Um, how much? How far are we? Uh, I think 15 minutes in. So I think we have time. Um, you know what? You don't have the time. Basically okay. 1.52. 1.52. Okay, sweet. Uh, but just because we want to wrap up by two o'clock, because I know that there's another popular live stream that starts at two. So um, we're definitely looking forward to next week as well. Um, we uh, uh, we had a high rise. We had a meeting in Chiefman Park last night after the flash mob and after the, all the other stuff that we did yesterday. The tour of the uh, facility. We actually we had nine events yesterday. So um, we're hard at work. <laughs> I did great, great. Um, but no, I mean, like, really, we're uh, we're very interested in learning more about the city and uh, and learning more about the priorities of people in the city. So it's it's really important for us to uh, to hear from you. And uh, so last night we had a, a meeting of the high rise buildings in Chicago Park, and uh, I think it went well. I um, you know, obviously would defer to the people who were there to. Uh, to verify that, but I would also um, defer to anyone else who's in um, a high-rise building. Uh, we would love to present to your building as well. We, uh, we recognize that a lot of District 10 is multifamily units, and a lot of them are large multifamily units. So um, I live in a 140-plus unit building, and across the street from me is a 400-unit building, and the other street is a 340-unit building, and that's a lot of people, and that's you know, Uptown, Golden Triangle, Capitol Hill, Cheeseman, the north side of Congress, the south side of Congress is a little bit more single family, but uh, but really our district has a lot of multifamily units, and we want to make sure that if you if you live in an apartment or condominium building, that you have the opportunity to, uh, to to hear from the district office too. So anything we can do to help. Um, let us know. We would love to come and present in your office, or excuse me, in your building. So let us know. The last thing I'd say is happy Halloween. So I hope to chat with you more soon. Did, did we get any questions? Uh, nope. All right, you don't want to hear from us. So no, I'm just kidding. Um, so thank you so much for watching. If you are watching, this is show on the food. A million. Five billion people. I mean, five people. Well, thank you so much for watching, and uh, we uh, look forward to continuing to do this. Hopefully, we'll get the things worked out. We'll get the microphone fixed. Uh, so, thanks for uh, thanks for being part of the uh, the tip of the spear, so to speak. But we intend to do this, and we'll get even better each week. 
so that we're more polished and we can provide more of a an interactive experience as opposed to me telling you what's going on and I, I really actually I'm staring at the camera. So me telling the lens what's going on is uh, maybe not as exciting as as reaching out and hearing directly from you. So and we're playing charades too. That's fun. <laughs> So, all right, well, thank you so much for, for watching and uh, have a wonderful weekend.